No, no, I would, I would only point out that I have been here before you pointed to me. So I, I have preceded. Uh, <laughs> right, the right. That's uh, one of the reasons. Eh? One of the reasons scholars give to these uh, walls is uh, not only that, but only because they, th they say Aristotle was interested in the permanence of being. So continuity, before, after, this is the same Thomas. But, um, so let, let's not ask what, what are the reasons for that, but let's uh, stick to the fact that when he wants to grasp a subjectivity, a totality which is ungraspable in itself, he has to introduce a past. What was it for... What's your name? April. April? Yeah. What is? So we have April, ineffable. If I want to uh, compose the fracture between the essence and the pizza, I will ask, what was it for April to be being, to exist? But he's but it, 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 not asking, what is for April? He could have asked, what is for April to be? But it asks, what was it? For many reasons. One, one is what Thomas said. The todeti was already there. The todeti is uh, uh, technically the expression of subjectivity in Aristotle. He eh? called hypo which is translated sometimes as subjects, subjectus, and means literally what lies. Under the bottom, lies under the bottom. Because it's the last thing you can reach. Beyond the individual, you cannot go. Was it M? What? M? M? What lies at the bottom? So the attempt to grasp subjectivity then, and to bring uh, together the two terms of the fracture, of the ontological fracture, coincides with the introduction of time into being. Aristotle has to introduce time into being in the form of the past when he tries to grasp the todity, to conceive of it, not grasp it in, only in the sense of pointing it out trying to conceive. So the, the time is the locus, is the place of subjectivity. It is modern philosophy becomes clear, but I just wanted to go back to and since the first moment eh, under uh, the form of this uh, past TN, what was it? We had uh, the apparition of the past. Is it is that clear? Yes. This is considered mm -hmm. one of the most hard problem in Aristotle ontology. But if you understand that the wager is how to grasp a subjectivity. You did a good job of explaining it. <laughs> But for the thing, you must always uh, 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 read this tacit dative. What was it for X, for that man, for that being, for that whole thing, for that uh, woman? For that, uh, <laughs> clear? So, uh, we saw already, in some way, it is what we already saw yesterday, you know, for the form of life. You know? Trying you know, to grasp the form of life, we fall into a past, into a biography, into an autobiography, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. uh, another consideration uh, on this uh, problem, which shows how uh, time and movement are within the very concept of the form. Eh? So we, have, we can consider 
uh, form and life form, uh, not, not necessarily as two contrary terms. Uh, the Greek has for form many terms, uh, morphe, form, uh, eidos, uh, but there are two terms which, in, which are interesting for us because they also uh, mean a way of living, form in the sense of form of life. These two terms are schema, like scheme, eh? our term, English term scheme yeah. comes here, and rhythmus. Like the English term written. They both mean form, way of uh, behaving, way of uh, staying, of presenting. Huh? Schema comes from the verb echo, to have. And rhythmus is connected with the image of uh, flowing. And we had a beautiful analysis of the meaning of two these two terms made by the great linguist Emile Benveniste, that we often quote. He, he, he asks, what is the difference between these two terms that apparently seem to mean something very similar? Way of uh, behaving, form. He shows that the difference is that schema means a fixed form. So form objectivized, consider as a form, as an object, sorry, as an object, and also means manner of behavior, but also consider as something fixed, stable. Rhythmos, rit on the contrary, as the modern term, the modern term suggests, is on the contrary, the, the form in the very instance of it is being assumed by, by uh, something moving and especially fluid. Yeah. So rhythmus in Greek means uh, the form, but in the very moment in which it is assumed by a moving thing or a liquid or whatever. Yeah. Something moving, something flowing. It is the form, as uh, Benveniste puts it, in its momentariness and instantaneity. But it can be each time repeated, but not as a fixed thing. Just to 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 even underline this difference. And I don't know if you know. I think you are familiar with that. And before that uh, cinema movie was invented, we had many. Uh, phenomena that precedes, that anticipates the, the cinema. And one of the most interesting is the photographic technique developed by Marais. Mm -hmm. Do you know him, Marais? Mm -hmm. So he, what was a Marais problem was with a, a complicated system of many cameras, etc., etc., to try to uh, grasp uh, in a photograph the movement. And so we have these marvelous, if you have seen, they are really marvelous, for instance, uh, the, a bird flying. So in the photo, you will, you will see, in the same photograms, you will see the form of the, 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 this uh, bird flying as a rhythm. As a rhythm. So as if, uh, well, it's different. I should have an example to show. But just to, to get an idea of what a, a rhythm is, it is a form, it's not an informal. It is a form, not a monomorphic, but it is a form in, a, in its uh, instantaneous assumption by a moving being. I, I have all these pictures with me. Yeah. Yes. No. <laughs> well, Vincent gets the pictures out. Uh, there was a uh, very